So this is the biggest problem with most all of the thrift stores around here, as well as most of those we've been to, and why we rarely step foot in one of them these days. Hey, it's Don. We just took a trip to a thrift store around here, one of the better ones, one of the bigger ones, to show you the state of affairs in thrift store shopping these days. So the wife and I went to, I think it's a Humane Society thrift store around here. It's a newer one. It's a larger store. They take fairly good care of the store. Uh, most of the charity money goes to the Humane Society. This is typical. This is actually a better store than most of the ones that we go to. Obviously, there's a bunch of vintage stuff in here, but most of the vintage stuff that we run into at almost every thrift store out here is just junk. The chalkware piece was junk. This is just what feels like cement, uh, uh, I guess, tiki, Samoa kind of figure. There's antique malls around here, so what people do is dump off the stuff they can't sell in the mall, like this bed warmer here. Uh, this vase, too. It looks nice. It looks like it could be something. It's older, but it's just not marked or worth anything. It wouldn't be worth my time. Even this old bottle, 1890s, 1910 bottle, was still only worth what they had on it. And that goes for pretty much everything on every shelf in every thrift store around here. If I had to go to thrift stores for a living, I wouldn't be living. I would have to go out and get a job, a regular full-time job working for somebody else because the amount of material in thrift stores around here, even the best ones, is terrible. And I can't see wasting all this time. The wife and I were in this store here for probably, geez, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. I looked through everything twice. I even waited till they brought out a couple new carts, and even that stuff wasn't so good. I mean, they're decent items. They're just not worth much here. These, these holland dutch plates and dishes and things maybe 10 bucks if you're lucky and they've got them priced half that there's just no money to be made on pretty much anything in here there's avon bottles not worth anything a, a stein that's an avon stein again not worth anything so when this is the type of item that you're going to pick you're not going to make any money four bucks for a hand-painted bird statuary by just some rando person you've never heard of painted at home again it's not going to be worth or carry much money now, I don't have any preference as to where I look in the store. If there's anything that looks like it's going to be sellable, I'm going to check it out. But again, every single thing in this store is just common junk that's really not worth much. Now, this store, too, doesn't have any high-end place. This is literally what's coming out straight from the back. They're not picking through or auctioning off or listing stuff on eBay because they don't have an eBay site. This is, again, one of the reasons why I go to this one if I'm going to happen to go somewhere more often than any other one. And usually when we're out to a thrift store these days, it has nothing whatsoever to do with reselling. We weren't here for reselling. I didn't expect to get a single solitary thing that's decent. Reproduction Coke signs. Um, prints. Now, some of the prints were originals, but they're, again, by nobody's. So if the print's only worth 10 or 15 bucks, shipping and all that kind of stuff into it, my time, my effort, it, it's just not worth it to me. If I'm not going to make, take home at least $15 profit after COGS, after my labor and everything, I'm not going to mess with it. Even CDs. I looked through hundreds of CDs to find nothing. I looked through the LPs and they had just, that's just a little section of them. They probably had 10 times that in boxes. The only thing I even remotely was interested in was a few of the 45s that they had there. But even those are very common. That's like a $3.45 if I'm lucky, Tintin. Tin. So everyone in here, there's an Ike uh, Clanton. Um, it's just not worth anything. The Map Globe uh, 45 wasn't worth anything. None of the other ones in here are. And at the price they're asking for most of these sorts of items, I'm not going to make a single solitary dime off of it once I take the time to invest in the the photographs or scanning, listing it, storing it, shipping it, if it even sells. There's just no money to be made. Now, I looked up a few just to make sure I wasn't off on that, and there wasn't, again, a single solitary disc worth getting in this entire place. There must have been altogether maybe 700 discs, counting the, the 45s and counting the LPs. They had a ton of LPs. 
But again, somebody's either picked through them or they only donated the, the very best stock. Now, I thought I had one here too. This is a stereo. This is a Columbia. And I expect it to be a 6i, which when I pull it out, you'll see it is. But the condition isn't right. It's just not that great. The, the album cover's bad. And that one was the best one I found in the list. And it's probably worth 15 or 20 bucks. Everything else seems to have been picked through immensely. I mean, it, it's just like the bare bones bottom of the barrel for everything at the thrift stores around here. So this is the biggest problem with thrift stores. They're not getting anything. A few years ago, thrift stores like this, I could have at least walked away with, you know, a bag, even a half a cart full of stuff. But in the last few years, that's gone away. Far too many people, it appears at this point, are listing the stuff themselves, even if they're not technically resellers, just trying to get a few bucks out of it. Every dollar helps these days with the economy and the whole works, but if you're going to be going to thrift stores in my area, it may not be that way in yours, there's just no money whatsoever to be made in these stores. None. None, none. Especially when you equate your time. This one took us 20 minutes, 25 minutes round trip to get to, so not incredibly long time. But by the time I add in the hour and 15 minutes, I'm almost two hours into this and at the end of the day, I only found one single thing, which we'll show you at the very end here. One single thing that meets my bare bones minimum threshold. Tons of Bill Cosby records, which won't sell. This seems to be, this is another bin too. This seems to be the, the disposal area for everything. A lot of the books in this place here too are donations from an antique dealer. There's antique dealer labels on a bunch of the stuff. Again, everything was looked through. They had some Star Trek paperbacks. They thought, well, maybe there's a couple bucks. But even at the price, they're asking $2.99, $3.99 for used paperbacks. There's just no money to be made. And even this book here I'm looking at, there's an antique uh, slide-in piece of paper there from where it was originally for sale. And again, that's almost every thrift store around here. People in my position just take and dump off the stuff that they can't sell here. They'll get a tax slip and they'll use it to write off on their taxes. And that's all this stuff is. It's not sellable merchandise for reselling purposes. None of it is that I can see. And again, I took a very good look at everything, including all the books, the paperbacks, the records, the CDs, geez, all the glass everything every aisle even back into the toys we dug through everything i only had to look up a handful of things four or five things in the store that were even remotely worth it now i even looked through the brand new christmas cards birthday cards and all of that kind of stuff they were all sorted out somebody had stuck just a couple together there was no packs available anything that's new i i take a shot on because sometimes they might be worth selling on say amazon or something but Across the board, every single thrift store that I go to, this is my results around here. It's the once in a blue moon time that I, I may get something. And that's not enough to make me want to go to a thrift store. Even a, as a Pepsi collector, common Pepsi bottles for about what you'd get them for at an antique mall, a dollar a piece. Coca-Cola, modern day junk, basically. Coffee mugs. I dug through all these coffee mugs thinking, oh, I got to at least be able to find a coffee mug. No, not a single one. Now, here's a couple more items dropped off from an antique store. There's actually a label. They're tied together. It has antique store markings on it. There's some sterling paint or some silver paint on it. Again, it's not worth more than the price they have on it. And you can see the little white tag from where it was at an antique mall. Right here, milk glass. It's a decent piece of milk glass, but again, it's not worth anything. There's a lot of items in stores, in these thrift stores around here, that look good. But if you don't know what you're doing and you're not looking them up properly, you're going to get taken on these items because you're not going to be able to sell them. You'll just be ending up dropping them back off at the same thrift stores that you purchased them from without making a dime. And that's the biggest problem around here. There's no money to be made at any of the local thrift stores. It can't be done. You can't make a living for sure. So we have sought extra areas to source them. Pickers are usually our best auctions, uh, big, huge, massive flea markets, especially the flea markets that only run maybe once every month or two. Those are usually the best. But thrift stores are the last line we would ever think about going to. The China, same thing. It's all been picked through, it looks like. Everyone's fairly common. The price of $1.99 is actually all it would be worth, even if I went to list it on eBay. So this is honestly the biggest problem. There's too many reproductions. There's too much just low-value junk in the stores. Even NOS items, 
um, home goods, anything in the thrift stores around here is pretty much just junk. And it doesn't matter the thrift store. It doesn't matter at all. Even like Goodwill auctions are terrible around here. Everything is picked through and everything goes for more than it's worth at all the stores that we go to. One of the best things I saw was this copper dish you'll see right here with the wooden handle. It was weighing about a pound and a half or two pounds. I thought maybe even the, the scrap value of copper would have been worth more, but even that wasn't worth my time at all. So out of everything I saw today, this is actually the only thing I bought. This is a Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. It's a Brit brand, early, original, shiny time. It's original from the 90s, so for $3.99, I can't go wrong on this. I should easily sell it for close to 30 bucks. Most of the other items there, the profit margin just wasn't there, so it wasn't worth my time investing into them. If this hadn't had the original box or anything else like that, that would be a different story. Now, this same place that I got this at has a punch card. So if you spend so much money there, you get a stamp on a card. When you fill up a card, you get um, the $10 off your purchase. So this was about $2.75 by the time we subtracted that $10. The wife found a few other things, but this is the only thing that I was able to find out of that entire store worth reselling. Everything else that I looked at would have barely gotten me a dollar or two profit at best. So you gotta be extremely careful. Most everything these days doesn't seem to show up on the floor of almost any thrift store around here that's worth anything. All the stuff that goes to the floor seems to be pretty much low value junk. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Again. Thank goodness for Chef Boyardee. It's Murphy.